Whether you are playing in a modern day action game, a fantasy game or a sci-fi game, you probably circumvent certain obstacles by simply blowing them up. Explosions happen all the time in games and movies, and sometimes people begin to associate explosions with excitement. So in this video I would like to explain how explosions work in GURPS. Explosions are described on pages 414 and 415 of GURPS basic set, but they aren't straightforward. Sometimes they can grind the game to a halt, because resolving a large explosion might need a lot of dice rolls and calculations. If you want to make an advantage-based attack explosive, you have to add the explosion enhancement. However, you might notice that it's a leveled enhancement, so you can have Explosion 1, Explosion 2 and Explosion 3. Explosive weapons have EX as their damage modifier in the table, and it seems that it almost always assumes the first level of explosion. There are exceptions that are elaborated on in the individual weapons descriptions, such as thermobarics. Explosive weapons usually deal crushing or burning damage, but the basic set says that the GM may allow it on other attack types. So how does it work? An explosive attack has a collateral damage radius equal to 2 multiplied by the dice of damage in yards. Thus, an attack that deals 8d damage will have an explosion radius of 16 yards. This 8d damage applies only to the target struck but everyone else caught in the blast divides it by 3 times distance in yards from the center of the blast, rounding down. If this is an attack with a second level of the explosion modifier, then divide damage by 2 times distance in yards. And if it's the third level of explosion, then simply divide it by distance in yards. The basic set says that thinner or thicker atmospheres reduce or enhance the blast, but does not provide any rules. However, it says that in a vacuum or trace atmosphere, you divide damage by 10 times distance in yards. No rules are given for higher levels of explosion, so there are two options. Option 1 – they all work the same way. Option 2 – let's say that the second level explosions have their damage divided by 9 times distance in yards, and third level explosions have their damage divided by 8 times distance in yards. Underwater divide collateral damage by distance in yards. Pyramid 326 expanded these rules for the higher levels of explosions. Second level explosions divide their damage by two thirds of the distance, and third level explosions divide their damage by one third of the distance. You should roll this damage individually, but it is fine to, for example, make a single row for all the NPCs to save time. Interestingly enough, explosions are negated by torso DR, so they don't actually follow the rules for a large area injury that use the average of your torso DR and the DR of the least protected body part. If the attack has an armor divisor, it is not applied to this collateral damage. This seems to imply that all other modifiers, such as surge, radiation, side effect, do apply to collateral damage. You should also keep in mind that regardless of damage type, explosions are also incendiary. That means they deal one point of linked burning damage that can set things on fire. For burning explosions it's probably redundant. Finally, you can defend against explosion damage but only by doing a dodge and drop. Usually that means diving for cover, but you can also dive onto a grenade as a sacrificial dodge to save your friends. In such cases, the explosion becomes a contact explosion, and you take maximum possible damage, and everyone else gets your torso DR plus your HP as cover DR. Things can get even worse. If you happen to swallow a grenade, or get hit by an attack that has follow-up explosive attack, then the explosion becomes an internal explosion. This means that it is treated as a hit to the vitals, with a triple wounding modifier, and your DR has no effect at all, unless it is internal. 
It isn't said anywhere, but I think it's fair to assume that this applies even to targets with no vitals. And that everyone else gets your torsos DR plus your HP as cover DR, but only if this explosion brings you to minus 10 times HP, destroying your body in the process. Then there's another type of explosions that was introduced in high tech contained explosions. If an explosion occurs in a room or inside a vehicle, and the boundaries would receive two or more points of damage without getting destroyed by the blast, then an explosion is considered to be contained. Anyone in the area takes double damage, or half as much if there are doors and windows. Anyone behind the rupturing door or window automatically takes fragmentation damage. Speaking of that, let's talk about fragmentation in more detail. When looking at an explosive weapon stat block, you might see a number of dice in brackets. This is fragmentation damage. However, if there is no damage number in the brackets, that doesn't mean that there won't be any fragmentation. Any explosion can still create some fragments if there is any loose or frangible material at the explosion site. Such incidental fragmentation damage ranges from 1d-4 for ordinary earth to 1d for an explosion on loose scrap. I assume that the fragmentation mentioned in the contained explosion speed was meant to be this incidental fragmentation. Fragmentation affects everyone within 5 times dice of fragmentation damage yards from the center of the explosion. Pyramid 326 says that underwater fragmentation has a maximum range of 1 yard, regardless of damage. A fragment hits automatically if the explosive attack actually strikes the target. The fragments attack everyone else in the area at skill 15, that is modified as follows. Range from the center of the blast, posture modifier, and the target's size modifier. If the explosion occurred in the air, like an airburst warhead, then posture modifiers do not apply, and only overhead cover protects. For every three points by which the attack roll succeeds, one additional fragment strikes the target. Basically, fragmentation is a rapid-fire attack with recoil 3. You can also use die for cover as an active defense. This is the same roll that is used to dodge the initial explosion. Do not roll twice. There is one thing that seems a bit off. If you get hit directly by an explosive attack, you get one automatic fragment hit, but others around you might get hit by several fragments. I think that the rules should say that a direct hit indicates one automatic fragment hit and that you are attacked by the fragments as per normal rules too. Each fragment hits a random hit location. By default, if no damage type is listed in the brackets, the fragments deal cutting damage, but there are other valid damage types such as impaling, large piercing, or hot fragments that deal cyclic burning damage with a fractional armor divisor. This is used for white phosphorus or napalm warheads. If the base attack does burning damage or is incendiary, then the fragments also are incendiary. If you want to make an advantage base attack to have fragmentation, use the fragmentation modifier. However, you should keep in mind that this enhancement was somewhat reworked and expanded in GURPS Power-Ups 4 enhancements, so you might want to use that version instead. Aside from the blast damage and fragmentation, there are some additional effects that are described on pages 181 and 182 of GURPS High Tech. Except in a vacuum, if anyone takes crushing damage from an explosion, he must make an HT roll at minus 1 per 5 points of crushing damage penetrating the DR, and a bonus for earplugs, protected hearing, or similar countermeasures. Failure means that you are stunned and have a penalty to hearing rolls equal to your margin of failure for 20 minus HT minutes, with a minimum of 1 minute. If you fail by 10 or more, or fail critically, you go deaf. You can recover from it normally, but if you fail your recovery roll critically, then your hearing impairment becomes permanent. Protected hearing provides extremely good benefits here. 
Explosions also are bright and anyone looking toward a blast must roll against HT if crushing or burning damage was rolled against them, even if they received no injury. Basically, this means that everyone not facing away from the explosion's point of origin and who is within the blast radius has to roll. Your roll takes a minus 1 penalty per 10 points of crushing or burning damage received, regardless whether it penetrated DR, and gets bonuses for sunglasses, protected vision and similar character measures. Effects are the same as for hearing loss, but instead affect vision. And yes, it can stun you too. And also yes, it seems that if you are looking at the blast, then you have to roll twice to avoid getting stunned. Once for hearing and once for vision. Explosions are no joke. Finally, GURPS Tactical Shooting mentions on page 34 that being caught in an explosion should trigger a fright check, which seems reasonable. As you can see, explosions are quite complex in GURPS, and they do not work the same as area attacks. Explosions, especially with fragmentation, can take a long time to resolve. I understand why it works that way, but such attacks can really grind the combat to a halt. To speed things up, disregard the hearing and vision loss and do not roll damage individually. Also, Pseudobot for Discord has a function that automates explosion and fragmentation calculations, that's great. Also, there are some problems with explosion damage. For example, how does it interact with rapid fire? Where does it scatter? Do you have to resolve each shot automatically? That's that's a mystery to me. Although I think I saw a couple of suggestions on the forums on how to resolve it, but that would uh, take a really long time. Anyway, I guess uh, there is a niche to cover, a cinematic explosion role that uh, would simplify all these calculations. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.